what is up everyone and welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is lauren and at the moment i am currently working through some newborn baby vlogs because if you didn't already know or if you hadn't already noticed we have welcomed a little baby boy into our lives this is graylin fast asleep being very quiet for once and as of today that i'm filming this video he is one month old he was born on the 18th of May. It's currently the 18th of June. So that's a whole month of just absolutely loving this precious little human being, eh? And I hope you love me too. <laughs> Other than newborn baby vlogs, obviously I want to get these videos out of my system. When something pivotal happens in your life, obviously it becomes all consuming. And obviously grilling is all I talk about at the moment. He is my life right now so a lot of the videos on this channel are going to be newborn related and kind of motherhood videos but when I'm not talking about motherhood or newborn baby, little Graylin, I do typically try to upload some speed cleaning videos, organisation videos and home renovation updates on the channel when we get a second to get home renovation updates carried out. So please stay tuned for those. Graylin. He may look asleep, but he has just told me that if you're not already subscribed to the channel, you should go ahead and hit that subscribe button. He also says you need to hit the notification bell and obviously give this video a huge thumbs up. So I think you should listen to Graylin and um, do that. Say goodbye. Say goodbye, little chunky. Bye bye, little chunky. Bye bye, everyone. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> He's going to put you back in your crib. He's going to put you back in your little crib, mister. So I asked over on Instagram if anyone wanted to say a birth story on how Graylin was born. And a lot of you said that you did want to see this video. So that is what today's video is going to be. It's going to be a birth story. So I have got my notes here with me because that day was a huge blur. 18th of May. That day just... So I have got my notes. I may be looking at them throughout just to prompt me, but yeah. So I guess I should start from, I wouldn't say it was the beginning, but I'll kind of talk you through generally the build up to the birth. So if you have been following my channel for a little while, you'll have known that I'm a type one diabetic and that puts me in a high risk category during pregnancy. It puts me high risk because there's lots of complications. If my blood sugars are high, it could cause defects in the baby. Absolute worst case scenario, it could cause miscarriage or stillbirth, unfortunately. This is all worst case scenarios, so thankfully that wasn't the case for myself. When you're a type 1 diabetic, you are expected to have a bigger baby um, due to the amount of hormones that the baby produces to counteract the sugars that the mother has in a bloodstream. So all the way through my pregnancy, I was expecting to have a bigger baby and I was expected to have a C-section. The, the forewarned me that I might be having a C-section depending on the size of the baby. So that was kind of in my mind that I would be having the C-section from the off. So I wasn't scared about that. That was something I was quite comfortable with. I actually quite fancied a C-section over a natural birth and I had briefly talked about that in a previous vlog. So... Yeah, I was expecting a C-section. That was kind of my mindset going into the run-up of the birth. They also warned me very early on that being a high-risk patient, I would potentially get preeclampsia. So preeclampsia is the condition where you get high blood pressure left untreated. It can cause very serious complications for mother and baby. And it's a condition which has something to do with the placenta. I don't really know much about preeclampsia. I was just warned that I would probably get it and it is caused by the placenta. The only way to get rid of preeclampsia is to birth the placenta. So that was obviously in the back of my mind as well, especially towards the latter stages of my pregnancy. I was getting a lot of preeclampsia symptoms, which I'll go into later on. As a type 1 diabetic, I did have very regular uh, appointments with the consultant and growth scans. So in the beginning stages, I had a couple of scans prior to my 12 week scan. And then I had a couple in between the 12 week and the 20 week scan. And then after the 20 week scan, it was pretty much like 
every two weeks I was having some kind of scan or bump measurement just to make sure that baby was growing healthily and not too big. But those were very frequent, those in the run-up to the birth. Darren, I hadn't asked Darren to come to any of those particular appointments because they were constant and I didn't want Darren to unnecessarily come along to those appointments when they were just kind of not repeating things but just kind of assuring me that things were going the right way. So Darren never really came to any of those appointments. It was just the two scans that he came to, the 12 week scan and the um, 20 week scan. He may have came, come to another scan when there was a bit of worry at some point. I can't quite remember, but he certainly came to the 12 week and 20 week scan and I wasn't expecting him to come along to any of the other scans. So because I had gave myself up for a C-section, I had asked my consultant if there's any chance that we can schedule in for an elective c-section she kind of tried putting me off at first but then a second appointment that i had before she was really like encouraging me to have a c-section she had no problem booking me in for a c-section and it was booked in for the i think it was the second of june so graylin was due on the 12th of june she booked me in for a c-section on the second of june but that date was fully booked or something like that. So she had to book me in for the 28th of May. So we had a C-section scheduled in for the 28th of May. Fantastic. It's exactly what I wanted. I didn't like the thought of going into birth naturally. <laughs> and it was past the 37 week mark. So he would have been classed as full term at that point anyway. The last growth scan before scheduled C-section was on the 18th of May. So this was 10 days before the scheduled C-section. And because it was the last growth scan, I'd asked Darren if he wanted to come along to that final growth scan because it wasn't likely I was going to have any more scans after that date, but there'd been 10 days prior to the, the Schedule C section. And it would have been good for him to kind of see what happens in these appointments because there's quite a lot that goes on in these appointments anyway. And to kind of finalise some kind of birth plan, if we wanted to call it a birth plan. We obviously knew we were going in for a C-section, but if there was any changes to his growth that could hinder the C-section in any way, then we wanted to kind of get to grips with that and understand what we needed to do. So it was handy for Darren to be there with me. So he took a day off to come along to that appointment in the morning. The appointment was 10.30 on that day, and I was going to go back to work afterwards. That was my plan anyway. So at this point, my hospital bags were packed. You'd have seen the video for what's in my hospital bags. I will link that up here. And yeah, they were all packed, but actually I unpacked them because I remembered I hadn't washed any of the baby clothes and they say that you need to wash the baby clothes before going in anyway. So I did that. I completely unpacked pretty much both bags and washed the baby clothes and didn't pack them back up because I still thought I had a bit of time left. I also hadn't really cleaned the house. I had full plans, especially in my week off in maternity leave to get the house just blitzed, get things a bit more organized. I'd already started doing a bit of nesting, which again, I will leave that video up here. But generally the house just wasn't in a good state. So yeah, at that point, that was the situation back home. We went to the hospital and we waited in the waiting area while well, Darren waited in the waiting area whilst I went and got my blood pressure taken which is one of the standard checks at this appointment. I typically have a blood pressure check, sometimes have bloods done at that point, a urine check, I will then have my growth scan and then I will go in to speak to the consultant to discuss my diabetes and how it's affecting the growth of the baby or how it's affecting the pregnancy in general. Uh, Darren stayed in the waiting area whilst I got my blood pressure checked. It was just the blood pressure they were checking at this particular appointment. It was high on the first check, so it was about 160 yard over 90 yard, which is high anyway. In pregnancy, it's it's classed as high. So they did a second one about two minutes later. Again, very similar. It might have been a bit higher again. And then they waited about 10, 15 minutes. Was it 10, 15 minutes? Maybe not. It might have been a little bit less, but they did it a third time and again it was still sky high. That coupled with the fact that I had swollen ankles, my ankles, in fact my whole legs were like tree trunks that were just swollen right from the hips down. They weren't a pretty sight. So swollen ankles and the fact that I did mention to the midwife taking my blood pressure that um, I had started seeing a few flashing lights which I knew was a symptom of preeclampsia and I kind of didn't want to tell her that but you know you have to you have to say these things. 
So I said that I was seeing some flashing lights. So there was three symptoms already of preeclampsia that she noted and she said she was going to speak to the doctor whilst I go in for my growth scan and then she'll catch up with me after the growth scan. So me and Darren headed into the growth scan and everything was fine growth scan wise. She was checking the, the leg size, abdomen size, head size and it was measuring a little bit higher on the centile. I think he was measuring towards the 95th centile, 90th centile I think it was. Yeah, because it goes 50, 90, 97, I think. Anyway, he was measuring closer to the 90th centile, which wouldn't have been too bad. A C-section would be good for that, but it doesn't mean I couldn't have given birth naturally. He was measuring a brilliant size. So we came out of the growth scan, got the last scan picture because it was the last scan we were having. So we asked for a scan picture for that. And then we headed back to the waiting area. I didn't see the midwife. Oh, did I? I can't remember. I don't think I saw the midwife who took my blood pressure, but we were waiting in the waiting area and the consultant came and brought us in. And obviously I was just expecting to have the diabetes chat with her, but she kind of said, how, do you, how are you feeling? We were both like, yeah, it's getting close now, right excited. And then she said, well, you're not gonna like what I'm about to tell you or something along those lines. And then suddenly it's like, oh. I kind of knew what she was going to say. I kind of knew it was going to be in relation to preeclampsia. What I hadn't expected was that she was going to admit me into hospital to stay until I gave birth. So in my mind, when she said that, I was expecting to be in hospital for the 10 nights, which I hadn't even finished work at that point. My maternity was due to start on the, the Friday of that week. And I still had a whole handover of things to do for my replacement member of staff. And yeah, I didn't get any of that done. So I was expecting to be in for the full 10 nights until scheduled C-section date, but because it's preeclampsia, we needed to get the placenta out ASAP. So she said, you are likely to need to give birth in the next one to four days. So I was being admitted to give birth pretty much that week, which to me, that was just horrible. I didn't like that. I didn't like the thought of going from due date 12th of June, to C-section date 28th of May to need to give birth in the next one to four days. That just didn't sit right with me. I didn't like that at all. I obviously broke down in front of the consultant and everyone else in the room, but it needed to be done because preeclampsia is obviously a serious condition to have during pregnancy and we needed to be safe for both myself and little Graylin. So at that point, I would have been 36 weeks and three days pregnant, which is obviously a little bit before full term. So he is technically a a premi baby, a little premature baby. And again, that wasn't nice because I really wanted to keep him cooked up inside until he reached full term. So I knew that everything had grown properly, all that kind of thing. So being a little bit premature really wasn't nice for me to be thinking about as well. So yeah, I had to deal with that on top of the fact that we had to give birth. <laughs> I was a little bit concerned for Darren as well. Darren was sitting there being a trooper as he always is, but I don't think it's any secret that he hasn't really managed well during the pregnancy. He's really struggled to come to terms with the thought of being a father. So in my mind as well, I was conscious of the fact that this was happening and it's an extra thing on top of his struggles already. And if it was just a smooth sailing pregnancy, he might have been in a different mindset, but it was just like a worry and a panic all on top of his struggles already. So yeah, I did get a little bit concerned for Darren, but he was he was a gem. He held my hand, he told me everything's gonna be fine. It was such a, a pleasure to be with on that day because I really needed that. <laughs> so she told me that I'm gonna be admitted for that day. Expect to give birth within the next one to four days. I'm assuming they were planning it to go through via C-section rather than induction or anything like that. Hence why she said one to four days because it probably coincided with the theatres at the hospital. Oh, he's squeaking. Let's hope he stays quiet. So I'm guessing that's why she said one to four days. She sent us up to Ward 16 and I was hooked up to another blood pressure monitor up there. I also had the... C CTG, can't remember if it's CTG, I'll put it on the screen. But I had that around my abdomen to monitor the baby's movements and the baby's heart rate. Obviously my BP was still sky high, didn't expect that to change. Obviously getting all that new information, shocking information, I was expecting it to be a lot higher anyway. 
Darren set up a little WhatsApp group with the family, all our immediate family, just to say that um, we're not going to be having our baby on the 28th of May anymore. It's likely to be within the next few days. So obviously everyone was getting excited, a bit nervous because they wondered why we would need to go in a little bit earlier than planned. But generally it was good vibes. Darren and I were sat in the room on board 16, kind of just taken it in, but we kind of settled down to the fact that we were going to be having a, a child in the next few days. And my mind was a little bit more at ease at that point. On the monitor, just having so many different appointments anyway, being hooked up and seeing baby's heart rate, I knew that the heart rate of baby should be 140, oh, sorry, between 140 and 160, which generally it was. But I did look over at the monitor and noticed it was about, it was going from 70 to 80 beats per minute. And I turned it down and I said, mm, his heart rate looks a little bit slow. That's quite low from what I've seen in the past. And then the midwife came back in and she stood and looked at the monitor for a good couple of minutes, but they felt like the longest few minutes of my life, I think. And she stood and stared at that screen for a long time, but it was just for a couple of minutes. I think she said she just needs to go speak to a doctor because baby's heart rate is a little bit on the lower side and it has been for quite some time. And because of that, we're going to need to take it to the labour suite pretty much ASAP. Well, obviously my heart rate's going like the clappers now. I could sense the urgency in her voice. She was being as calm as possible, but I could sense the urgency in her voice. And every now and again, I'm sure there was one or two midwives coming into the room with her. And then next thing, we're being told to gather our stuff and head up to the labour ward. So the labour ward's on the same floor as Ward 16. It's just along the corridor. But we were accompanied by two or three other midwives. On the walk to the labour suite, the midwife said, we're just taking you along because baby's heart rate's a little lower and we may need to deliver the baby as soon as possible. So there we are, we, we know that we're going from 12th of June to the 28th of May to the next four days to give birth imminently. No wonder I had high blood pressure. <laughs> Honestly, no wonder my blood pressure was sky high. My God. So the two or three midwives took me and Darren into a room on the labour suite for ourselves. Suddenly there were about five or six other members of staff coming in and out of the room and they were quite frantic. From going from Ward 16 to the labour suite it was pretty much a blur to me. I just remember bits and pieces but sitting in that room I just remember like five or six members of staff that's midwives, um, doctors coming in looking quite frantic and one of them I'm sure one of them was saying code red. It was something like code red or red light, red light, something like that, which that's an emergency. Get in there now. So I'm lying on the bed. They're hooking me up with the blood pressure monitor again. They're putting the CTG around my abdomen. One midwife was practically ripping my clothes off, would tell me to get my clothes off because I need to be put into a gown. I was just casually taking them off, but she's like, get them off now. One midwife was inserting a catheter ready for cesarean little man one midwife was trying to put a cannula into my hand again for the c-section for all the ivs <laughs> he's squeaking again grilling we had an anaesthetist come in to say that we are going to have to perform a cesarean section pretty much right now we're just checking the baby's heart rate to make sure it's not staying low like constantly if it's staying low constantly then unfortunately I'm going to have to be put under a general anaesthetic to deliver the baby like that. If baby's heart rate goes up again or it shows signs of improvement then we can hang fire and I can have either an epidural or a spinal tap. Thankfully because his heart rate did go up and down it wasn't constantly low we were able to go for the spinal tap but it just meant that I didn't have a general anaesthetic which was quite a relief in hindsight. At that point Darren had been asked to go get changed in some theatre scrubs and some very sexy yellow crocs he looked really good in them and then we both got taken along to the theatres ready for the c-section. So they sat me up in the theatre room Darren was sat in front of me, well he was stood in front of me holding onto my hands reassuring me that everything was fine. So he was stood in front of me and the anaesthetist was injecting the spinal tap into my spine. I kept on feeling some pain on the right hand side, he kept on asking if I could feel anything and I could definitely feel some pain in the right hand side. He tried that about three times and he said if we can't do it after the third time then we're going to have to put you under general anaesthetic which in that point I was just saying yeah okay that's fine. I didn't want to but if it meant 
just getting baby out safe and protecting me as well then yeah just get it done but thankfully on the third go the spinal tap was injected successfully Darren bless him I'm sure you won't mind me telling you this as well but I mean Darren doesn't do well with bloody needles so <laughs> He was stood in front of his and I think he caught a glimpse of one of the bloody needles that the anaesthetist put on the side after trying to inject me the first time. And at that point he was kind of like, right, I need a glass of water. I was sat there, head down, crying my eyes out saying, Darren, I don't want any water. I don't need any. I don't, well, I didn't say that, but in my mind I was like, I don't need any water. Just just keep a hold of his. <laughs> and then he went, um, can someone take a hand? So I'm going to pass out or something like that anyway. So he got a glass of water, the nurse took my hands while he went to sit down against the wall just whilst all that was being done and he kind of made himself feel a bit better. <laughs> Bless him. The spinal tap was then successfully injected and we were ready for delivering. So obviously in a C-section the screen was put up and then I started feeling the tugging and pulling. That was an odd sensation completely but I was still emotional, I was crying my eyes out, I was looking at Darren just so thankful that he was able to be there with me and he pulled himself up from his little ordeal to make sure he held my hand. That and the fact that I was just emotional that in a couple of minutes time we were going to be parents. So yeah I was very emotional at that point. And then at 29 minutes past 12 little Grayla was born. I was so emotional right up until the point that he started crying. They literally pulled him from me and straight away started crying and I'd never been so happy and thankful in all my life that he was here safe and sound and he was he was crying. That was the one thing I was worried about whilst I was laying there that he was going to be pulled out and I weren't going to get him to cry. <sighs> that was hard. But he did, he cried straight away and that was it. Our lives changed forever. So the midwives and doctors checked him over, obviously coming from a high risk patient and the fact that he had a low heart rate, they did want to check him over to make sure there was nothing going on with him of any concern or whether he needed to go to the NICU, which is the neonatal intensive care unit. But he was fine. He was a healthy £7, 10 ounces, especially for his gestational age. That was a good weight. They asked Darren if he wanted to cut the cord. He politely declined, especially after his little ordeal. Yeah, they asked if I wanted skin to skin. Obviously, I wanted skin to skin straight away. I wanted to just feel him and just hold him and nurture him at that point, knowing that we've both been through such a big ordeal. They also asked if I wanted to keep the placenta. I didn't like the thought of wanting to keep or ground down the placenta for health benefits when actually it put me and my baby at risk anyway. So. Yeah, I, said, I declined the placenta at that time as well. After he had skin to skin with myself, they took him off and wrapped him up, gave him to Darren. And we had our first family photograph, which those photos I will treasure for as long as I live. They're the most precious photos to me. So once all that had been done, we were taken back to the labour suite and I was kept in a room by myself, away from the ward, just to recover and be monitored. Darren was also allowed to stay with me. Obviously, COVID restrictions are still in place at the time of this video and certainly at the time of giving birth but despite the COVID restrictions because we were in our own room Darren was allowed to stay with me overnight. He decided not to just because he had the dogs to go and look after and obviously we hadn't prepared to give birth that day otherwise we would have planned for someone to go see the dogs whilst we were in hospital. And then I guess the rest you may have seen in my birth vlog which I'll link up there kind of just the follow on from actually going through that ordeal and spending the next seven days in hospital trying to look after my blood pressure as well as trying to look after Graylin who suffered with a bit of low blood sugar and jaundice. So yeah that was the birth story pretty much. I'll conclude it by saying that Darren was an absolute gem throughout the ordeal. Despite his own personal struggles with the pregnancy and the thought of becoming a dad, he really, really stepped up to the mark and really proved to myself that he was gonna be the best father to our little son, just in those two hours alone, from our appointment at 10.30 a.m. to Graylin's birth at 12.29 p.m. He really did prove himself and I can't thank him enough for really just stepping up to the mark. He supported me loads when we got that bad news and he held my hand throughout, through the C-section, I just, can't thank him enough for being there and putting his own worries and struggles to one side to be able to support me. And that was, thanks Darren. <laughs> I also can't thank him enough for taking that day off 
on the 18th of May. If he hadn't have taken that day off, which like I said at the beginning of the video, he doesn't normally come to these appointments, but because it was the last growth scan, we decided he would take the day off and he would come along to finalise the birth plans and obviously see baby Simps for the last time before he was going to be introduced as Graylin. So yeah, he, he took the day off and if he hadn't have taken that day off, he was very likely going to be working quite far away, well over an hour's drive to the hospital. So even if he had been told to get over to the hospital like urgently, there's no way that he would have been able to make it in time for the C-section. And I needed him there to support me throughout all that bad news from being told I had preeclampsia and we were going to be delivering in the next four days to being told baby is in distress and we need to get him delivered ASAP. Yeah, he needed to be there and I'm so thankful that he was. I think it was just fate that Darren was there at that appointment. And I think Graylin just really wanted to make sure that his dad was going to be there. I had asked for a debrief from the lead midwife to find out why we had been rushed in for an emergency C-section. Obviously, I knew Graylin's heart rate had plummeted causing his distress and any kind of distress like that we need to to look at ASAP so I'd asked if there was anything that was causing that she came back with the like a report of the umbilical cord they must take tests from the umbilical cord to determine if there was anything going on which might have caused any complications but all the test results came back fine from that so it wasn't the umbilical cord like it wasn't the contents of his umbilical cord that caused it. The only other thing it could have really been is that his cord had wrapped around his neck. We think it's as I was sat down because every time I was sat down, his heart rate was going lower. When I was stood up or sat up, his heart rate kind of progressed a bit better. And then when I sat back down again, his heart rate went back down. So we think it was probably as I was sat down, his cords probably getting wrapped around his neck but they weren't too certain if that was the case because as they pulled him out his cord wasn't wrapped around his neck so the only other thing it could have really been is that his cord was kind of sitting on his neck causing pressure and causing the distress. I guess I'm kind of just thankful again that I had that appointment just this regular routine appointment on the 18th of May just to check his growth. I'm so thankful I had that because had I not had that appointment and been told that I had preeclampsia and therefore needed to be monitored, I would have went home and I suppose I, I wouldn't have noticed if anything was wrong. I struggled a lot to kind of count his movements throughout the pregnancy. So if I'd went home following that appointment, I probably wouldn't realise that he wasn't doing much movement and therefore wouldn't have realised that he was in any distress. So yeah, I'm kind of thankful that I had that appointment on the 18th of May and was told that I had preeclampsia in a very odd, strange way. Finally, the midwifery staff, the consultant, the doctors, the scabo staff, absolutely everyone who helped on that day throughout till when I came out a week later were just absolutely spectacular. They were brilliant. I couldn't fault any of them. Everyone was so pleasant and helpful and really supported me and Darren whilst we were on hospital and obviously looked after Graylin so well. So yeah, you can't thank them enough. They were absolutely fantastic. So yeah, that was the birth story on how Graylin came into the world. Obviously, it was very, very different to how we anticipated it to be. We knew being high risk, there'd be some aspects of complications, but we did not anticipate this at all. Looking back, we got to meet Graylin four weeks earlier than anticipated. I can't be any more thankful that we get to have four weeks more of Graylin <laughs> in our lives. Four weeks more of Graylin in our lives is just an absolute pleasure. So, yes, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.